Gospel of February 21st, 2015, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the customs post. He said to him, Follow me. And leaving everything behind, he got up and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were at table with them. The Pharisees and their scribes complained to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said to them in reply, Those who are healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. But then it's very convenient for us as we enter into Lent to contemplate on the first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, if you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise from you in the darkness. Ancient ruins shall be rebuilt for your sake. And they shall call you restorer of ruined homesteads. Then you shall delight in the Lord. I'm just taking some fragments of the whole lecture. Many times we wonder how to live our lives if we ever think about it. It would be a great mistake to think that we can live anyway, regardless that we are Christians, baptized or whatever. It will be real foolishness, for we are not allowed to live as pagans do. But many times we also feel that because we have been baptized and we pray, we deserve to have more from God, and that's also a mistake. Here the Lord is telling us through his prophet how we should live. Remove from your midst oppression, false accusation and malicious speech. It is so easy for us to fall into that, to oppress everyone. And we, especially if we are employers, can oppress our employees. But we can also oppress our family, whether we are the father, the mother, or whatever. And we can fight against our parents if we are the children. The Lord says, remove oppression, false accusation, malicious speech. It is so common nowadays to hear everywhere cursing and blasphemy. And then it, the people might even think that it's funny when it's not. It offends everyone, especially offends God. And we should speak what builds up what edificates the others and ourselves. Then he said, share your bread on the hot with the hungry, satisfy the afflicted. If we, if we do that, we will rebuild the ruined homesteads, not only ours, but many of the many people that live, that live around us then we will be light, the light of God, shining forth for everyone. Now, it is not necessary for us to be holy in the first place. God knows that we are sinners and He loves us. Here the acclamation, I take no pleasure in the death of the weak man, says the Lord but rather in his conversion that he may live. He wants us to live, not to die. 
Pope Francis has in his shield the wording miserando et eligendo, which means he saw him with mercy and elected him. Of course, that little passage of the Gospel relates precisely to Matthew, to Levi. Levi. But po the Pope applies it to himself. Levi, that is Matthew, was a professional singer, a Jew that was working as tax collector for the foreign empire, and thus causing great harm to all his brothers, and being hated for that. Yet when the Lord goes by, he does not despise him. He sees Matthew with love and calls him to his service. The calling of the Lord is so sweet that most of the times we will answer happily, but we are still free to reject him. The worst example perhaps is Judah the Iscariot, who, having lived with the Master for three long years, rejected the lo his love's master, his, lo his master's love, and sold him for thirty coins of silver. However, we see the reaction of Matthew. He is happy to receive the master in his home, and he gives a banquet. Now the Pharisees, whose name means precisely being pure by keeping themselves apart, immediately criticize the disciples, saying, How can you eat with sinners? But the Lord rebukes them. It is not the healthy who needs the medic, it is the sick. I did not come for the righteous, but for the sinners to convert. Now who is righteous before the Lord? Who can stand before him and say that he has not committed sins? No one on this earth. Of all the creatures, of all the people ever, the only one that was without sin was the Virgin Mary. And she was the, made so due to the grace in advance of he who was going to incarnate himself from her. But other than her, there is no one. So we all are sinners. It is also very necessary for us to feel and encounter ourselves as sinners. Nowadays, our culture is so light. We don't want to call anything sin. It's like everything is permitted and allowed, and it's not true. We have to feel the blackness of our sin and the heinous crimes that we commit against each other and in turn that we commit against God and how we too are pursued with those crimes against us how we live in this valley of death because we are far away from God and that is what the first lecture talks about to change our whole ways by following Jesus to know that even though we are sinners we are called upon because He wants us to live, and He shows us the way. It is great for us to feel redeemed. May the Lord concede all of you, brothers, to feel that way. God bless you all.